Yo, what's up everyone, Code Philip here, and today I will show you a new tutorial on how to create a to-do list which also saves the task to the local storage. So that way you can refresh the page, close the page, but the task will still be saved. So let me quickly show you. So here we have the to-do list and you can just add a new task, for example, test, and it will be added. If you add another task, it also works. And if we check the local storage, you can see both items are saved. And if I delete an item now, you can see it also gets deleted from the local storage. And if I refresh the page, it's still there. And I can also even close the page, open it again, and the item will still be there. Let's open the developer console, application, and in the tasks, you can see the one item test is still inside. If we delete it, it's deleted. And if we refresh the page, it's still deleted. So let's go ahead and code that from scratch. So first you will open a new folder in VS Studio and then you will create a new file called index.html. You will also create a style.css file and a script.js file. Inside the HTML file you will add an exclamation mark and then press shift and tab. That way you get the basic structure of an HTML layout and you don't have to write it all out. The title can be to-do list. And inside the body tag, we'll add a div with the class name container. Inside this container, we will add an h1 tag with the name to do list. We will add an input field with the type text and the ID task input. We can also add a placeholder, for example, add a task. Then we'll create a button element with the ID add task and the button text add. Then we will create an UL element with the ID task list. So that's the basic structure, but we will still need to add the style.css file. And at the end of your body tag, we will add the script file like this. So that's the whole HTML file done and we don't need to touch it anymore. But it does look a little bit um, ugly. So let's quickly add some CSS styling and you can just copy that or do your own styling, whatever you want, or you can keep it just this way. So now it's in the center and it looks a little bit better. If we try to do something with it, nothing happens because we haven't added any JavaScript yet, but let's do that now. So first we will need to get the DOM elements. So that's all the IDs that we have added here, the input field, the button element and the UL list. Okay, so let's do that. We will add a new constant with the name at button and we will write document dot get element by ID and we will add the ID from the HTML file, which is at task. And then we will create another constant with the name with the name task input and we'll do the same document dot document dot get element by ID. And we will add the ID from the task input, which is task input. And another constant with the name task list. And again, document dot get, oops, get element by ID. And the ID of the task list, which is also just task list. Okay, that's it. We have added all the HTML elements to a constant. And now we will create two functions. So first we will create the add task function. This is the function that will take care of the adding of the task, which the name already implies. And then we will create a function called create task element and we will pass the variable task. Okay, so we have these two functions. So we will first create a new constant with the name task and we will set the task input dot value to trim the contents. So that's just that, for example, in the in the input field, if you just add a bunch of spaces, it will still um, get saved and we don't want that. We just want to remove all the white space and this is what the trim function does. And then we will create an if statement. So if the task is not empty, we will call the create task function, which we created below pass the task value and then we will clean clear the, the input field. 
So that way, if we press add, the whole input field will be cleared and you can just add a new one. And we can also try it by adding an event listener to our button. So let's quickly do that, add button dot add event listener and on click we will call the function at task. So and if we press it now, you can see the input field gets cleared again and we can add a new task. So that works great already. But let's add a else function. So if the task is empty, we will alert the user that he should please enter a task. So let's try it again. We will refresh the page. Don't add anything, just press the button and the page says, please enter a task. So we will enter a task, add it, but as you can see, nothing gets added. So let's go and do that. So for that, we go to the create task element function. And here we will create a new constant called list item. And this list item will create a new element, which will be an, which will be a list item. The list item will be inside your UL element, like this. And we will add to that li element, so list item dot text content equals task. So the task that we got from here will be added to that li element. So we can try it, refresh the page, add something and press the button. Nothing happens yet because we still have to append the child to the list. So we will write task list dot append child and list item. So what this does, it takes the task list, so our unordered list from here, and it will append, so add the list item, so the li element. So let's try it again, refresh the page, add something, press the button, and you can see we have a functioning to-do list, like 50% of it. And it does work with unlimited things. And if you don't enter something, it still tells you, but if you refresh the page, it's all gone. So let's add that functionality that it can save the task to the local storage. We do that by creating a new function called save tasks. And inside that function, we will create an array called tasks, which is just empty. And then we will take all the task list items. So we can do that by writing task list dot query selector all, which takes all the li elements inside our task list. And for each element, we will, we will run a function. And for each li element, we will push it into the tasks array like this. And we'll also trim it. So all the white space gets deleted. And then don't forget the semicolon. And then we will call the local storage function and set its item to tasks and turn that array to a JSON format. just like that. And now we can try and see if it actually saves anything to the local storage. So we can write test, edit, and it does get added. And if we just press right click, inspect, and go to application, you can go to the local storage, file, and to the tasks, and you can see no properties added. So let's see why that is. So the reason why it didn't get added to the local storage is because we need to call this function inside our add task function. So when the task is not empty, we will create a new element, right? Create a new list item, add the text content of the, of the input field and append it to our UL element. And set the task input value, so the input field to zero, to nothing, so we can write a new task. And then it will get saved to the local storage. And let's try it again. Refresh the page. Add a new task. Okay, it does get added. And if we check here, one moment. 
Oh, so I'm getting an error, that's why. So we will need to put in tasks. Okay, don't forget it. And then we will try and recreate it. So test, add, and check the local storage. And you can see we have an array with the first item test. So it does work. And if we refresh the page, it's gone because we need to load all the tasks when we refresh the page. And we do that by calling this function that we will create now, which is called load tasks. So create a new function and then we will add a new constant, which will be the same const tasks. And then we will reconvert the JSON object to an array. And we do that by writing pass and adding this code, get item from our tasks array. And if nothing is inside that array, we will just let it be empty. And then for each array item that we get, we will, we will run the function create task element. So that way we get all the items from the local storage, turn it into an array, and then the create task element function will create Lee elements and add them to our list. So let's see if that works. We will refresh the page, add a new task, test for example, and then refresh the page, but nothing happens because we need to add the load task function all the way to the at the top. So right below our DOM elements, like that. Let's try it again. And you can see I refresh the page and it appears. And we can add another task, for example, like this. You can see it gets added to our local storage. And if you refresh the page, it's still there, also still in here. And that's the basic um, local storage to-do list. But we also want to maybe delete all the items. How do we do that? And for that, we will need to modify our create task element function. And for that, we will first create a new constant and we will call it delete button. We will add a document dot create element and we will create a new button element. And this delete button will have a text content which just says delete. So the user knows that if he presses it, the task will be deleted. And we can also add a class to it, which will be called delete task, which I already have styled. It's this one here. It's just that the background color is red and the user knows, okay, it's a delete button. And if we try it out now, refresh the page, nothing happens because we first need to append the delete button to our list item. So we will write list item dot append child delete button. So let's try it again. Refresh the page and you can see the delete button is there. But if you press it, nothing happens. But if you add a new item, the delete button always gets added. So to delete the item, we will need to add a new event listener to the delete button. So we will add the event listener and on click, it should run the function task list dot remove child list item. And that way the, oh, don't forget the semicolon again. And that way the item will be deleted. So let's try it again. All the items are still here. And as you can see, it does add the word delete to it. And this is a problem we need to fix in our save task function. So we save the items, but when we get the, but, but it does save also the text content of the Lee item. And inside the Lee item, we have the button now, the delete button. So we need to remove it. So we will write behind our text content, we will add a dot and write replace delete and we will replace it with nothing. So it just stays empty. And if we refresh the page now, okay, it's still there, but we can delete them. 
and let's try it again. Test, add, refresh the page, and we have it. So you can now add stuff however you want, and in the local storage it gets saved. And if you delete the item now, it's gone, but in the local storage it's still there. So if you refresh the page, it comes back. So if you delete all the items and then refresh the page, it will all be there. And for that, we need to change a function. So in our create task element, we added the delete button, but when we press the item, we will also need to save it to the local storage so that it gets also removed from the local storage. So let's test it again. And if we press delete, it does get deleted from the local storage. Let's try it again. And it does get deleted. And again, and it's all gone. And if you refresh the page, it's still gone. And if you write something again, refresh the page, it's still there. And you can do whatever you want. Delete it, and it's gone. And that's how you make a nice and easy to-do list which uses the local storage.